This video is going to show how we can create a geologic model once all of our strata grids have been created and checked for accuracy. And this is also going to show how we can use the geologic model viewer. We'll just be focusing on these two commands here. So creating the geologic model, it's very simple once the grids have been made. We're going to go to our strata calc pull down menu. We're going to go down to Define Geologic Model. This is going to be a new file. I'll sometimes put this in my Surfaces folder since it's just going to be a collection of the surfaces. And I'm just going to call this Geologic Model. You may have more than one of these associated with a project. For example, you might have one geologic model that checks the inverse distance method for interpolation. I have another geologic model that checks the linear least squares method, things like that. So you can name these appropriately. There are two types of geologic models. Most of the time I end up using this elevation type. Reason for that being it uses elevation grids, including the topography. The other option is based only off of thickness grids, but does not account for the topography in the model. So most of the time I end up using elevation. Up at the top here, we need to first select our topography file. So hit select here, find our topography. Now I do want to point out that the topography can be either a grid or a tin file. Many times I prefer to use a tin file for very, very accurate topography, but we're going to be sticking with a grid for now. Everything else down here is going to be a grid file. We do not have the option to use tins in this area for modeling geology. Now the normal process would be to add, to get a new row created. We would type in the strata name, specify the key non-key status, mention what type of attribute it is, and actually pick the grid file. But if we have a lot of grids in the model, that's going to be a tedious process. And since we've already created a script for all the grids that were going to be created, we can just load in that script, which is our auto run file. So I'm just going to click load auto run. I'll pick our auto run file and I'll click open. That's going to load in all the grids that we made. There are some grids that are left out and those are the thickness grids. Since this is an elevation type model, we don't need to enter in the thickness grids because the thickness can be calculated from the elevations. I do just want to very quickly make sure that all the grids are actually found. So what it's done here is it's loaded in the grids from the location we specified in the auto run file, so this directory. If we've since moved the grids, renamed some folders, these grids may not be found and we if that's the case, we could come down here to reset the directory and we could just go find the folder where the grids are actually saved. So anytime you move files around or reorganize or rename things, you might need just to check on this to ensure that all the grids are actually found. Another important note here is the ordering of the grids. All my grids are currently listed in correct geologic order, meaning my overburdens at the top, C1 is next, C2 keys at the bottom. If I got any of these things mixed up, we're going to see a very strange looking geologic model if we try to draw a cross section or calculate volumes, because Carlson uses a top down sort of dominance with the grids. By that I mean the topography exists at the very top, and anywhere that cuts down into the overburden, it understands that there's nothing occurring above the topography. It's just air. So when topography cuts down to the overburden, it just, the overburden ceases to exist in that area. Same thing for the overburden if it cuts into the C1. If overburden dips down, it will cut out the C1. So we always rely on this top-down dominance and that's why we need to ensure we get these in correct geologic order. If you do need to move some things around, you can pick the strata layer, you can say move down, move up. 
You can always make changes here. You could re-pick a grid file. So we can just pick the grid file there. But I also want to show how we can manually insert grids into this model. So let's say I'm going to remove the C1 strata elevation. Just remove that and I'm going to add it back in. The strata name, I'm going to enter in C1, and I always recommend that you make the strata names match what's in the drill holes. You don't necessarily have to, but it is recommended. I'm going to enter in the bottom elevation grid. This is a key strata. And then I'll select the file. C1 elevation. Click OK. And there it's been added in. So the ordering does matter as long as the strata is in the correct order. It's okay to have an attribute above an elevation. So long as the elevation grids are in the correct order, that's the main thing that I'm watching for. Every strata layer has to have an elevation grid. I couldn't just enter in a C1 ash without an elevation and expect it to model. So every strata has to have an elevation grid. Every strata does not have to have an attribute grid. So I don't have ash BTU sulfur for the inner burden. Perfectly fine. That's pretty much all that I need to do at the moment. I'm going to save the geologic model and we're going to exit out. And just as a quick way to inspect that model, I'm going to go to StratoCal. Geologic Model Viewer. This is essentially going to be the same as loading all those grids into the 3D Viewer window. This will just check to see what the grids are going to look like stacked up. So again, that just opens up that 3D Viewer window and you can just inspect all of your grids to ensure everything is loaded in there. Another good point to mention, again, this top-down dominance, wherever this red topography cuts down through the strata grids, the program is going to understand that the strata doesn't actually exist out here. The strata only exists when it's below the topography. So that's just a good way to check that your strata layers are displayed properly. Now, I do want to mention this 3D viewer did not load in the attribute grids because the attributes such as BTU would be very high above the elevations since they have elevation or values around 8 to 12,000, something like that, whereas the ash sulfur would be much lower, so it wouldn't be sensible to try to view those in 3D with the elevation grids. So it's just a quick way to check out your geology is in the files correctly. And next we're going to show some other things that we can do with these grids now that we have them all stored in the geologic model.